Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Karen Lavender Clothesline, and in today's video, we're going to do a thrift haul of items that I picked up while thrifting in Goodwill on Monday. Today is Friday, and you guys will be seeing this video probably on Sunday. So if you're new to my channel, I am a full-time eBay reseller, and what that means is I support myself fully by selling on eBay and also creating these YouTube videos. So I hope you guys are interested in reselling or what is being found in the Goodwill stores. That's pretty much the number one thrift store that I go to, along with a couple of other different stores, but my main thrift store is Goodwill still. So Monday I went shopping and found some really unique items on the shelves. A lot of times I don't know what I'm picking up and you guys help me out by identifying items. And the first item that I'm gonna show is no different. I kind of knew what it was, but I kind of didn't, and you guys nailed it. So let's get started. Let's take a look at the first item. So I was going down the clear glass aisle and came across this item. Now right away I thought it might be a bird feeder that gets hung, you know, from a tree. But right away my mind thought that can't be because this thing is so heavy. This is what it looks like. And this thing, I don't want to exaggerate, probably weighs like two or three pounds, super, super heavy. And it's missing its cork and its little feeder tube that a hummingbird would, you know, drink nectar from. But you guys were right. You told me in that video comment section and I think also on Instagram, a couple of you private messaged me and said, hey, it is a hummingbird feeder. So thank you very much. Love you guys. Love this community. You know, so many times I pick up things and I either identify it wrong or I'm just not sure what the item is. And you guys are just so faithful to help me out. So thank you to all of you who have been with me from the beginning and new subscribers also who helped me identify the items. But that is item number one. I think I paid for four dollars for this. I did de-tag, de-sticker, and clean everything so that this stuff will be listed a little bit quicker, hopefully by Tuesday or Wednesday if you see something you want. It'll be in my eBay store lavender clothesline. So that is item number one, a beautiful blown glass hummingbird feeder in like a tortoise shell pattern, I'm going to say. The next item I went to grab off the shelf and I was shocked by how heavy this thing is. So it is a red Buddha statue. Let me get out of the shot for you. Oh. <laughs> I should have eaten my Wheaties. And this guy is like the weight of, of like a bowling ball. So what is a woman's bowling ball weigh? Like nine or 10 pounds, something like this. This thing is so heavy. And I did not comp him. I put him in my cart. He does have a little bit of wear on his fingers. And when I was looking at the wear, you know, that the finish is a little bit worn, I thought this can't be wood because it's so, so heavy. I'm thinking maybe a cast cement or a resin. And then when I started to comp Buddhas that look like this, I found a term I had never heard of, and it's called cinnabar resin. I don't know that that's what this is, but I learned something new every time I comp something that I don't know what I have. I think cinnabar resin is a certain natural resin that, um, that these type of statues are sometimes made out of. So I'm gonna have to read up on how to identify cinnabar resin, and a couple of you mentioned it also. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. One of the research projects I have for the weekend, yep, that's how I spend my weekends a lot of times on my downtime, just looking things up to learn more about them. But I said yes to him, no matter what he's made out of. I think it's very good, very artistic. And, um, and I said yes to a red, very heavy, bowling ball weight Buddha. This next item, truth be told, I did not find on a thrift store shelf. I got this vase from Roger. <laughs> so if you don't know who Roger is, he's my boyfriend. We've been dating just about a year now. I can't believe it's a year already. And for those of you who may not have heard the story of how I met Roger, I found him in a thrift store. Yep, <laughs> I found him in Goodwill. My kids always joke that if Roger and I continue on through the years, that we will have to tell our love story, I found my boyfriend in Goodwill. And that is the truth. So a couple of years ago, I started talking to Roger in the thrift store, because you know me, I'm chatty. I talk to everybody. I love making friends. And Roger is really shy and quiet. And you know me, I'm very bubbly and outgoing. I love to just talk to people. And Roger's more on the down low. And um, I just thought he was the cutest thing and started talking to him 
not for any reason other than just talking to another reseller. I knew he was a reseller and over a couple of years our conversations got longer and longer and then one day I invited him to a meetup, a reseller meetup I was having and I said hey I said we're having a meetup a bunch of us resellers do you want to come and he wasn't having any of it he was like uh no thank you. <laughs> So um, it wasn't that we weren't enjoying each other's company, but Roger is a really keep to himself private type of person. God bless him for putting up with all of my YouTube craziness. Love you, honey. Thank you so much for always being a good sport. And so he didn't come to that meetup, but soon after we continued our talking, and then one time we were talking for like 45 minutes and he invited me out to dinner. So um, we started dating and I'm just having the best time. So my best advice is, not only to go out and get what's yours, but if you are a reseller and your whole life is eBay and reselling and you're single, date a reseller because you wind up getting things that they find for you. So oftentimes when Roger and I are not thrifting together, you know, we will pick up items for the other ones. So when he sees items in the thrift store and I'm not with him, he takes a chance and picks items up for me and I do the same for him. And uh, we pay for our own items. You know, we just keep giving each other a bill. <laughs> but this gorgeous vase, Roger did find. It's in great condition. Now this says made in Spain on the bottom. And I don't know that I've found too many made in Spain pottery pieces, but the thing that's interesting to me is part of the writing, I don't know if that's a picture or I don't know, it almost looks like Japanese writing. So I'm gonna show that to you to see if anybody out there has any knowledge of this signature. So maybe that's the company mark, I don't know, but anyway, um, this I paid Roger five dollars for it, four or five dollars, and I'll probably get, I'm guessing because I haven't researched it yet, I'm going to think probably 28 to 32, somewhere around there. Beautiful vase. All right, as long as we're doing outdoor gardeny planter stuff, I found this pot and I was over the moon happy with this guy sitting there waiting for me on the shelf. Look how good this is. So for those of you who may not have seen this before, this is called Ugly Face Pottery. I have found the coffee cups. I don't think I've ever found any other pieces. And this one is a planter. You can tell it's been used, has a little, little dirt residue, even though I have cleaned it out. And I just love these things. I think they're very whimsical. Now, Ugly Face Pottery is quite an old design. I have comped, I've never seen in person, different antique, ugly face pottery that brings, I've seen pieces go for $500, $600 for the jugs, just beautifully done. A lot of them are very gruesome or creepy, but in any way, very talented artists are making these. And the expression, you know me, I'm all about the expression in the face, love stuff like this. What did I pay for this? Did I pay $6.99 guys or $9.99? I can't remember. I'm sure you guys will correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I said yes to him. I've been waiting to find these pieces and I was overjoyed that I got my first ugly face pot. The next piece that I found adorably cute is this yoga frog. <laughs> and when I saw him, I just fell in love. <laughs> This would be great in a garden. I don't know if this is weatherproof. I haven't checked on that yet, but how adorable would this be? <laughs> He's doing a handstand in a garden or by a garden gate, something like that. And this is put out Green Karma by Kitty's Critters, 2005. So that is what the branding looks like. When I see something like this, I never run a comp. I just put these in my cart as long as they're in good condition. I paid a couple of dollars for him and I think he's gonna be popular. I think he'll do quite well. Now I haven't looked up Kitty's Critters to see what other critters are involved, if it's like a very big prolific company that does all the animals, but I'm excited to learn about it. So very cute for, what did I say it was? For Green Karma. All right, this next item is gonna make a lot of noise. I'm gonna to have to hold the clapper. This is a hanging garden bell with a frog design. I think somebody donated all of their frog stuff. And I am more than happy to purchase those items. 
So this one does look like pottery. I don't see any signature on this. I think this one is mass marketed. With the ugly face pottery, that one is um, a maker. Did I show you that signature? I'm going to skip back, guys, because I think I forgot. I put it down here on the floor. I think I forgot to show you the signature on the ugly face pottery. So forgive me, we're going to jump back to this for a second. That is what the bottom of the ugly face pottery looks like. See how this signature looks like it's hand signed? And it looks like that's the date, maybe 2019. Whereas this one is hand signed and I can't read what that signature says. So if you recognize that signature and you want to leave a comment, I'd be thrilled with that. This is more like a mass marketed piece, no signature. I think this is poured into a mold. You know, the liquid slip is poured into the mold and then it is glazed and painted. So it's not individually one at a time made. That's my understanding of it. But nonetheless, this is a great item also. So I think I paid $3.99 for this, if I remember correctly. And I'm guessing probably $20 to $25 for it. That's just a guess. All right, we'll do one more gardeny piece or planting piece and then I'll move on to something else. This is a brass, I'm going to call it a plate for underneath a planter pot. That's what I would use this for. I don't know that that's the original use for this. This is what the back looks like. Well, I do have a lot of brass items in my store. I've slowed down picking up brass. So I only pick up specific pieces that are currently, you know, selling frequently. So if I'm picking up certain items that, um, that I'm sitting on for a while, I will slow down on that and just focus on the items that I think I can push faster. So I don't wind up with a whole basement of brass. If you haven't seen my basement, I have about 5,000 items down there and I do very well with hard goods but really honing in and zeroing in on what items are selling and what is going to take, you know, is going to create a backlog and take longer to sell. I try to be really aware of that. But I feel like this little breastplate is great for underneath a terracotta pot. So I said yes to it and I think I paid $3 for this. Okay, so I went down the toy aisle quickly because I'm really trying to learn plush a little bit more. I love plush animals and I think if I'm going to get into one niche and, and learn about a new niche, it's going to be plush animals. I know it can be daunting because there's so many of them, but I feel like once you learn plush animals or a lot of them, they're easy to spot, fairly easy to clean. You can either throw them into the washing machine or sometimes I wipe them down really well with a Clorox wipe. Like I put on rubber gloves and just wipe it down really well to disinfect it. But I feel like plush is one of those niches that is a good idea to learn more about because you can make really good profit with it. While I was down the plush aisle, having said all of that, I didn't find a plush animal, but I did turn around and spotted a game. And I was like, huh, that looks different. And this is it, Hero Quest. Let's see if I can tilt that back. Look how different that looks. Doesn't that look different? I feel like I did see Hero Quest when I sorted games a while back. I was trying to learn games more. So I just put in board game and I sort high to low and I look at salts. And I think Hero Quest was one that my mind remembered. And when I saw it, I just grabbed it. So this is what it looks like. Now mine is in quite rough shape. I'm going to say fair to good. I did have to tape the box a lot because the corners were totally split. And I'm going to show you what this looks like. This is the game inside. Let's see if I can I can hold it this way. It has all of the the booklets, instructions, the spell cards, you know, to, to cast spells, and a lot of different pieces that go on the board. I'm not going to bother to take the board out. Now, if you find Hero Quest and it's in excellent to new condition, I've seen these bring over $100. So even though mine is not in great condition like that, I still think this will bring, I'm going to say, $40 to $45. So I said absolutely yes to this. Now, if I put it on for that amount and it's not selling, I can part this out. There's even more pieces in here than what I showed you. And that's what I love about games. A lot of times people are looking to build onto their game or they're missing like the special dice or the figures. So I thought this was a really safe pickup. I believe I paid $3.99 for it. So $4, 
Hero Quest. I'm excited to see what this brings. And this is one item that I will try to remember to put on Instagram to let you guys know how it did. And my Instagram is Lavender Clothesline. All right, let's go to the next item. Okay, so I have a few little pieces we'll talk about and then we'll end with one of the bigger pieces. So I picked up some Pier 1 dresser knobs or drawer pulls or cabinet knobs. And even though there's only four of them, I think I'll probably get, I'm going to guess, like $18 for them. Now I'll have to look if these are still current or how old they are. The older they are, the better in my opinion, because these are a ceramic. And if somebody has a cracked one, they're going to be looking for them and there won't be as many on. The older an item gets, the more rare it's going to become. That's just the nature of using things. More items get broken and less become available if they're not currently made. So I went ahead and picked up Pier 1 knobs, a couple of dollars, and I'm guessing somewhere between 16 and 18, let's say. I picked up the long matches. What do we call that? Fireplace matches holder. And it is a wood, wood holder. This is handmade and it has a hand painted uh, water pump and bucket motif. Great for farmhouse, country, rustic, rural, all of those words. I paid a couple of dollars for it and I'm thinking this probably 20 to 25. All right, you guys know I'm sucker for a good cat. <laughs> Look how cute this is. A wooden plaque, home is where the cat is. It's just got a simple wire on the back. Again, two or three dollars I paid for it. And I don't know what this will bring. 18 to 22 maybe? Very easy to ship. Do I say that a thousand times? Yes, I do. Because I have shipped the biggest, craziest things. And when I wake up in the morning and I see what's sold, like this morning I woke up and I think I had about 12 or 15 going out and it was all clothing. It was like a miracle. I was like, oh, I don't have to ship anything crazy. It just made my day. So why am I not just picking up easy things? Because I get in the thrift store and you see these chandeliers or I don't know, just crazy big stuff and I can't help myself. But when it's an easy thing like this, I will always pick up these kind of things. The next item I found in the linens racks, I never skip the linens racks. Every single time I go to the thrift store, I look at linens every time. And when it's little linens that are brand new, it makes it so much easier because I do a lot of wash with linens, pillowcases, sheets, bedspreads. If it fits in my machine, I'm washing it. So I found this pillowcase, just beautiful. And I think this is Jim Thompson. You have to look at what happened to the tag wound up inside. Let's open it up and grab that tag. So that's what the tag looks like. I had never heard of Jim Thompson before, but when I see a linen that's really pretty and it's new with tags, always comp it. And if it's a couple of dollars, I always buy it because I know I can triple, quadruple my money. And, um, and I always say yes to things like that. This one's beautiful. I'm hoping this is silk, but I didn't see a material content uh, label. So when I don't find a material content label, I just put unknown. I would like to think it's silk, my hands are telling me it's more of a polyester. Okay, my camera battery died. That means I'm talking too much. <laughs> so I was saying, I don't think it's silk. I think it's polyester by the feel. So 250 into, again, Jim Thompson, I've got a comp. I'm thinking this one's gonna be about 22 to 25. All right, one more little item and then we will do the bigger item. So I so saw this bunny sitting on a shelf. <laughs> this is just, um, you know, a project, a hobby project. Donna made it. Good job, Donna. I thought she did a really great job painting this. So it's a little bunny, as you can see, who has a cracked egg, and he is very sad. <laughs> and he just stole my heart. So that's why I bought him. <laughs> Do not buy all of your eBay items that way with your sentiment, unless you really have a good eye and somehow you're knowing what's going to sell. Because if you just pick up what you like, that's fine, but you gotta make sure thousands of other people like exactly the same thing you like and that the item will bring good money and that those things sell. Otherwise, you're just gonna have a whole house of things that you love, which there's nothing really wrong with that, but it is bad if you're trying to make a living. So I said yes to the bunny. I think he was $2, I think $1.99. I don't know what he'll go for. Under, under 10, I'm gonna say, but I couldn't leave him behind. Let's do the last item and you guys teach me so much. So 
You all know I always have the disclaimer that I don't know a lot about one niche. My forte is trying to have a general knowledge of a lot of things because this is my thinking. When I go into a thrift store, I don't want to be looking at one or two niches. I want to be able to look at the whole store and pick the highest profitable items out of everything. But because I do things that way. I don't, I'm not an expert in any field. And that's where you guys come in. You guys are amazing. I really mean that. I love you guys. When I pick up something and I ask a question, you guys are on it. You always share with me your knowledge. And I love that in this community. And I am so thankful. So when I found this next item and I showed it in a shopping, you know, in Monday's shopping trip, you were like, that is butterfly wing art. I never even heard of butterfly wing art. I knew people framed, mounted and framed butterflies, but I didn't know there was a whole art world of butterfly wings. And I'm gonna show you this piece. So this is a vintage sewing, uh, what do I wanna say? Vintage sewing caddy, I'm gonna call it. And these pieces slide off. I took one off ahead of time so I could show this. And this is what this looks like. I thought this was a reverse painting, meaning the glass was painted on the opposite side and it gives it like a dreamy quality, but this is made out of butterfly wings. What? <laughs> and a couple of you commented on my last video, hey Karen, that's butterfly wing art. And I was like, what? <laughs> Why didn't I know that was a thing? So mark a tree around the edges. And I think it also has mark a tree. Yep, it does along the edges here. Both of these slide out. Let's see if I can do this. All right, so they both open. This is called an accordion. Pretty sure this is a sewing box. Somebody suggested a jewelry box, but I don't think a jewelry box would have a handle because you're not carrying a jewelry box, I don't think, from room to room. More likely to me, this is a sewing box and it's accordion. So these things slide out and there's different levels to keep all of your notions in. I just thought this was fantastic. My original guess that this was made, you know, in Indonesia, Thailand, something like that. But there's a little remainder of a sticker here. And I think the little scrap has Brazil. So this was made in Brazil. I don't know what kind of wood they have in Brazil. What would be my guess? Rosewood? I don't think it's rosewood. It's a very light wood. Brazil. Hmm. Not sure what kind of trees grow in Brazil. <laughs> But I said absolutely yes to this. I think I paid $10 for it. I have not comped it. It's in fairly good condition. It had a few wood chips, little pieces that are still there, but it still works properly. So I might include these. I'm not gonna try gluing these back on. I don't have that kind of time. But when I saw this, I fell in love with it. I said absolutely yes, and it makes it even better butterfly wing art. All right, guys, truth be told, this is the second time I had to make this video. Oh, the life of a YouTuber. I filmed the whole video and something was wrong with the footage. So I had to do the whole video over again. So I hope I didn't, you know, rush through it too much. I just wanted to make sure that I put the video out and it ran well. Love you guys. I appreciate all of your help. Leave a comment down below if you have any knowledge of anything I showed, if you've sold any of these type of items or anything that you just want to talk about. I especially love when you guys all talk to each other. I feel like we're a great community and I love that I'm helping to foster that, to bring us resellers and people that are just interested in thrifting, vintage, upcycle, all of those all of those trending words that we're all together in the community. All right, love you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Go out and get what's yours.